This is just going to be a quick example to help you with the current homework. I'm assuming you've uh, already watched or will watch the tutorials on how to create a plane. So I'm going to assume that's done. I've got a plane loaded here. Really, you just need the wing uh, for this particular exercise. So we don't really necessarily need the tail. In fact, you don't even really need the airfoils um, for this analysis. OK, so I've got a wing defined. Um, what I'm going to do is go up here to analysis and define an analysis. Uh, in this case, so in the video, it showed a fixed lift. We're not going to do that. That's going to be for later when we're looking at dynamics and we want to enter our weights and things. This is actually the easiest if we do a fixed speed. We can change our angle of attack. So I'd put in your design speed that you've calculated previously. Um, it doesn't matter which of these you choose. I just leave it like that. Actually, viscous is probably checked. It'll be easier if you uncheck it for now. We'll need that. Definitely need that later. But it won't really impact this current analysis as we're just looking at the lift distribution. You won't need to define inertia. Uh, you, you should check these, right? Because we need to match our lift coefficient, and that's going to depend on the area. Um, so if you don't, if these defaults don't correspond to what you've been using, just click user define and put in the area that you need. Similarly, you'll want to define your density, your air density for uh, whatever it is that um, makes sense for you, um, which should be your local conditions. Uh, and we don't need to do extra drag for now. Okay, so, wow. Okay, there we go. Um, so I've got that defined, and this is a, a sequence of angles of tack. I'm going to start at 0, go to 15, and go every half a degree, for example. That should be enough. You want to make sure this is checked, so you store those. And this is just going to take a couple seconds. OK, so that was done. I'm going to switch over to this view, this far left uh, view here. Uh, let's see if I can make this a little brighter. And thicker so you can see it. Oh, that did not change it at all, did it? Okay, there we go. And then make it a bit bigger. Okay, so really big so you can see it. You can ignore these other ones. This is my horizontal tail and my vertical tail. that doesn't generate lift. My horizontal tail lifts down, as we'll see uh, why in a little bit, or next week. Okay, but what I'm focusing on here, this is my wing. This is my lift distribution. Actually, it's not. Let's change that. Let's go to current graph. It's my lift coefficient. I'm going to start with my lift. This one here, local lift, CCL divided by MAC. That's your chord times your lift coefficient divided by the mean aerodynamic chord. This is just a measure of, it's a normalized um, lift. OK, so this is what my lift distribution looks like. And I can change my angle of attack. This is at 0 degrees angle of attack. If I look down here at the bottom right, that's giving me a CL of 0.4 at 0 degrees. So I want to increase my angle of attack till I get to my design CL. And let's just say it was 0.5. Okay, so I'm going to increase. Uh, and that's pretty close, right? This is about 0.5. If I really wanted to refine that, I could um, you know, run a, a finer discretization of my uh, step size here. And sorry, the colors keep changing. Let's just go back to something brighter here. Okay, so that's what my lift distribution looks like. And remember, we want this to look something close to elliptic. And in fact, we can tell how close it is if we go here. This efficiency, that's your inviscid span efficiency, E inviscid. It's 0.76, which is pretty bad. We want to be close to 1, um, you know, at least within, let's say, like 0 0.02, 0 .9, you know, get to like 0.98. And you can see it's pretty bad. I've got an excessive amount of lift here towards the tip. Okay. Um, but we're going to go with that for now. Let's assume that's what we got. So this is my lift. Um, so this is one thing I'm going to check, my lift at uh, my designed lift coefficient. Uh, we could fix this now. Uh, in fact, let's just do that. Let's go to plane, current plane, edit. And I've got way too much twist at the tip. I'm actually going to put some washout. I've already done this, so I know a good value in this case. So I got some washout, which means I have less twist at the tip. Save. Okay, erase it, and then reanalyze. Okay, it's done. So again, it's, I know it's hard to see. I'll wait till I increase it. My lift coefficient now is much lower because I've got that uh, washout. So I'm only at 0.1, so I'm going to have to get to a higher angle of attack. 
four, four and a half. Okay, I'm close to 0.5 again. If I really wanted to refine it, I could refine my discretization, but I've got, uh, that's my design lift coefficient about. And let's change this color so you can see it better. Okay, it looks a lot better, much closer to elliptic, and we can see the, the efficiency, the inviscid span efficiency is close to one. It's a bit above one, it's actually non-planar. And also there's some numerical error because of the discretization of, of using the panels. But this is good. So I've got a, a good lift distribution. So that's one criteria I want to look at. The other is stall. But stall doesn't occur at this lift coefficient. This is the, my design that I'm going to be flying at uh, most of the time. So I need to increase my angle of attack until I approach stall. So first, let's change our graph. Instead of applying the local lift, let's plot the lift coefficient. OK, so now I've got my lift coefficient. And let's say my airfoil that I'm using, uh, and let's say it's the same airfoil across the wing. Let's say it stalls at a lift coefficient of 1.2. So here I'm a bit above 0.6. So I'm going to increase my angle of attack until I get to 1.2. And yeah, I'm just about, I'm a little bit above. Again, I can't get much closer without changing my delta, which I will leave for now. Okay, so let's say that was it. That means it's going to stall uh, here inboard, which is good, right? Um, so my section lift max CL max was 1.2. My wing is at a CL of 1. Point, about 1.1. So that means my wing or airplane CL max is 1.1. It's not. It's always going to be lower than my airfoil one. It would only be the same as if this line was flat, right? That every section had the same CL. Then my wing CL max and my airfoil CL max would be the same. But as we discussed, we don't really want that because then I maybe have stall towards the tip, right? It's a bit unpredictable where it's going to stall. So I actually needed to drop down a bit of the tip. So this is good. Um, and again, it's lower, right? My airfoil seal max is about 1.2. My wing seal max is 1.1. Let's take a look at what it would have looked like if I hadn't fixed that twist distribution. Let's go back and change my wing. And again, this is really big, but just to illustrate, put a bunch of lift at the, at the tip. Save that and rerun. And now we got to get back up to towards 1.2, too high. So there, uh, change the color again so you can see it. All right, so here's where part of my lift coefficient distribution first hit 1.2. So it's going to stall about here. That's maybe not horrible because my ailerons are probably about the last 15 or 20 percent of my wing. But I'm a bit uncomfortable with that. It's getting close to my ailerons. In any case, that's going to be a pretty decent rolling moment if I'm stalling out here. So I would like to move that in a bit if I could. Uh, fortunately, we saw we could do that. So um, this at this case, at this high CL, I don't really care so much about my span efficiency. I care about the stall. At the lower CL where I'm flying at, I care about my span efficiency that I've got an efficient um, lift distribution for low drag. So those are the two things you want to look at. So you're going to have to iterate a bit, switching between looking at the lift distribution and what the span efficiency is versus looking at the lift coefficient and seeing where you're going to stall. And you'll have to play with your twist and cord a little bit to try to iterate to get a design that works well for both efficient crews, if you will, and for a, uh, a stall, a stalling characteristics that aren't uh, towards the tip. Okay, we'll talk more about stability things uh, this coming week.